Hey everybody, I'm Scott Weichel. You're listening to the award-winning My Kind of Country right here on MKOCRadio.com. My guest tonight is a fantastic singer and songwriter in her own right, and she is also going to be hosting a sh- brand new show on My Kind of Country on Friday nights at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. It's called the Indie Americana Radio Show, and I'm very happy to have her with us tonight to talk about that. This is Beth Williams. Beth, how are you tonight? I am doing wonderful, and thank you so much for having me on your show. I'm excited to be with you. Well, it's an honor, and I'm sure looking forward to getting your show out to my listeners. And uh, tell our folks a little bit about what they can expect for this fabulous show. Well, I live in Colorado. I came from Texas, but I live in Colorado, and so it's called where the uh, Colorado mountains meet the West Texas wind and beyond, and that kind of opens it up for everything, but... It's um, just they're indie songwriters. These are not famous people. These are just humble songwriters with great music and great songs. So it's Texas and Colorado songwriters mainly. And then I throw in, you know, what I call the wild card, which is someone from other than um, around here. Because, you know, you know this. I don't know if your listeners know this, but there are so many great songwriters who never get heard because perhaps they don't have the money to hire a publicist and record promoters and so much about our business is money and people who have a backer or big funds behind them they can hire people to get them heard you know just do you know booking agents and all that and the people that I play normally don't have any of that so I really like it I'm I feel like I'm sort of a champion for songwriters who are great but they are not tooting their own horn so I get to toot it for them, I guess, is what you'd say. Well, that's a great way to get uh, get their music heard. And you just never know who's listening. You know, we get so many listeners uh, tuning in from all over the world. You never know who's going to be listening. And there might be somebody that will decide, hey, I want to pick up one of those songs. And it will be a big hit for them. You just never know what's going to happen, you know. I think that's absolutely right. And the other thing that I do with my show is I archive it, you know, after the show has aired. Um, on the radio, then I archive it on my website, bethmusic.com slash radio shows, and I have a link to each of the songwriters. So uh, my hope is that people, your listeners, will hear songs that they love and can't live without, and they'll want to go to that songwriter's Facebook page or to their website and maybe get that particular song. And if not, you know, they might just want to follow them on Facebook because it's such an encouragement um, you know, as songwriters, as indie songwriters, we are so appreciative when people kind of join join our tribe and join up with us, and it really means so much. So, yeah, that's that's my hope, and I I think your listeners, I, I think listeners, I think you all will will like the show. I hope so because these are really um, grassroots, honest songwriters, and you know they haven't spent. Uh, uh, you know, gone to Nashville and spent a hundred thousand dollars, you know, doing, um, you know, that kind of a CD. Usually, these are just they do it themselves. Sometimes at home, or uh, you know, they they're really saving their pennies so they can get in and even just do a CD. And I, I'm astonished personally because I hear so many indie songwriters who are every bit as good as the famous people that you might hear. Absolutely. It's just they're on a different journey. Absolutely. So, yeah, I'm really excited that your listeners are going to get to hear the music, and I hope everybody will tune in. Absolutely. And again, folks, that's going to be Fridays at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We will have all that information on our social media sites on Twitter and Facebook, and we will also have a website page uh, right on our our website, mkocradio.com, where you can read more about Beth's show and her music. And again, we'll share all the links to get you into touch with these wonderful musicians that you're going to hear on this show. And that's, you know, you brought up a very good point. There are so many great artists out there that uh, are fabulous and, and and for whatever reason, you know, they, they don't uh, hit, quote, unquote, the big time. But uh, with shows like what we're doing, there's no reason that uh, people can't hear their music. And there's no reason that, that we can't get the music out to them. And they're always very appreciative, you know, when you play their music, too. And I, and I love to be able to do that and bring that to my listeners. It, it, it gives us something different to play rather than, this, you know, the same old stuff you always hear on all the radio stations. Yeah, I think that's absolutely right. And it's really... I, I do think that most of the indie songwriters that I know 
are really, really appreciative because, um, you know, they know that well, they're just not doing that other thing. You know, it's just it's sometimes it's a it's a game, and and sometimes it's just it's a different thing. I mean, if you're if you're trying to pursue being famous, and the songwriters that I usually play, they're not even trying to do that. But but it's like an artist. You know, if someone and probably a bunch of your listeners might be artists, or maybe a carpenter who does beautiful, you know, woodwork. You know, you want to do it, but you want to share it with other people. And it's, I, you know, I've explained to my husband, it would be like if I painted a beautiful picture, and I'm not a painter, but if I did, and I, I took that picture and I stuck it in a closet and no one ever saw it, you know, I just think that God gives us these gifts to use and we want to share them with other people. And, and hopefully our art or paintings or whatever, whatever it is we do, if we are, you know, if we cook really good, then we're a blessing to those around us. And um, so I think it's kind of all about that. And I, I love what you're doing in, in that you're playing, you know, indie songwriters. And, you know, it's uh, it's just terrific for them. And, you know, you're just spreading the light. I love it. Well, we're glad to do it. And, you know, we certainly play the legends of country music right up alongside of these, these fine folks, and we're happy to do it. And, and again, it makes them excited that their music is getting out there. And, you know, we're kind of all about that at My Kind of Country. We, we want to play good music. We want to bring good music to our people. And the nice thing about Internet radio is that we have the ability to do that. You know, we're not constrained by, uh, you know, uh, FCC regulations and things like that, where we can we can get this music out there, and it's 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 a wonderful feeling to be able to do that. Yeah, and I, that's see, I love that too. I mean, the variety of you know having these people that are well known, and you know that we love those, but then we have these other people, and and to me, you know, it's just uh, like a tapestry of just wonderful music, and plus, you know, you you never know what you're going to get, and but it's always good. You always know it's going to be great. It's always going to be good music. But, um, you know, and I think that so often songs that we hear touch us, you know, and, you know, in a different way maybe, you know, depending on what we're going through in our life. And, you know, so I think it's great that you're doing both. Absolutely. Well, I want to thank you for sharing your uh, your music and uh, this wonderful show with our listeners. We're looking forward to getting it on the air. It's the uh, Beth Williams Indie Americana radio show. It'll be broadcasting on Fridays at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on My Kind of Country. And, Beth, tell me a little bit about how you got into this doing this show and how long have you been doing this show now? Well, it's a crazy story. So I am a singer-songwriter, and so I have a song called Yodeling in Heaven, um, which I should get that song to you. And I have a YouTube video of it. I was singing at a cowboy church in Texas, and, you know, we just set up the camera and shot the video, and just not a big deal. And But it's been on YouTube. Well, a lady in New Zealand saw that video and contacted me to ask if I would come be the headliner in New Zealand at the Mart Music Festival. And at first I actually deleted the um, the email because I thought, well, this is probably some wacky person. <laughs> this, you know, but I ended up contacting her, and sure enough, they flew me to New Zealand, I was one of the headliners on that, that Friday night, I was the headliner, and before I performed, there was a radio show, IC Radio in New Zealand, who, they interviewed me before I performed, and then they got in touch with me later after I got back to the state, because I had mentioned to a friend of theirs, you know, I always kind of wanted to be on, you know, talk on the radio, and and so they contacted me and said, "Will you will you try doing a clip?" And so I just threw something together because I have a little, I have a small recording studio here that I I do a lot of stuff here, and so I sent that to them, and that was February of this year, and so I've been doing it ever since, and I just found that although it's quite time consuming, as you know. Just the idea of getting music out there that people might not get to hear. So that's how that happens. You never know what's going to come in your email box. So everybody check your email. And also, when I put that video up, it's on my, my YouTube channel, Beth Williams Music. And when I put that video up, it's not very good. I mean, it, it's the quality. It's a little video camera. It's just um, there's nothing tweaked. It's just an honest recording. But you never know when you put stuff out there how God's going to use that or where it's going to take you, whether you believe in God or not. You never know. So 
you know, when we're doing stuff, we just got to do what we think is right. And it doesn't have to be perfect. That's something that's really helped me in my life. Because when I was younger, I thought, well, you know, if it's not really perfect, I'm not doing it. Or, it's, you know what I mean? But you yeah. just can't wait yeah. for that. You just got to do what you do. So that's it. That's how, I, that's how I ended up doing. That's how I ended up talking to you today. Thanks to a woman named Ann George in New Zealand. Crazy, huh? Well, Ann, thank you so much. I hope you're listening because we're very happy to uh, help continue to spread the word on all this great music. And that's absolutely right. You know, you and I ended up having a conversation the other evening about uh, the show. And, and boom, here we are doing the interview. And boom, here we are putting it on the station. So there it is. <laughs> I know. It's just, it's just a great thing. And I think everybody, whatever, you know, just do the next right thing. And then the right doors will open for you. You just got to keep. Keep your chin up and keep going. Amen to Thanks. that. Well, Beth, I, I'd like to talk about your music a little bit, too, and I certainly want to play some of your songs here after we're done talking. Um, you do a lot of different things. You do music and vocal lessons. Uh, you're a very accomplished uh, singer and songwriter, and uh, you were the... Um, a new female vocalist nominee for the Academy of Country Music, and I think that's fabulous. And you've got, by my count on your website, you've got eight different uh, albums out, I believe, right? I do, yeah. I mean, I, I did a, um, my first album in Nashville, and we spent a lot of money doing that, and I had songs that were in the charts, and that's been a while back, and that's when I got the nomination. And uh -huh. the other albums I did when I lived in Texas, and um, so... You know, my first album, I would say, is more country. Everything that I do, like I was singing at a, a, a thing once. I was singing a Tom Petty song. <laughs> Somebody came up and said, you know, even if you sing Tom Petty, you sound country. <laughs> and I'm like, well, hey. So um, there's always just a, a country flavor with everything I do. In this old house, that particular CD, um, it's more probably Americana. But then a song like Ruby and John, which is about my grandparents, it's just pure country. And, um, you know, you, you are what you are. And my mother was from Georgia, and my dad was from Alabama. And so that's just there with me. And then I've got two gospel CDs, and I have, before I went to New Zealand, and George, he said, you know, we just love your yodeling. And I said, well, you know, I'm not really much of a yodeler. I just yodel a little bit. And she said, well, we love your yodeling. We love any kind of yodeling, and I said, okay, then I'll, I'll do you a yodel CD before I come to New Zealand. I mean, I was just talking. I didn't really mean it, I don't think, <laughs> but she kind of she held me to it, and so I was like, okay. So what I did is I, I have a CD called Yodel, and I took songs like Home on the Range, um, Red River Valley, and I wrote my own yodels. I just made them up, and um, then I, you know, of course, I stuck Cattle Call on there and a couple of others, so and that sold really, really, people really, they just like, yo, some, either people love yodeling or hate yodeling. And <laughs> I encourage your listeners to go listen to my Yodeling in Heaven on YouTube because it explains how I hated yodeling and how I came to love it, what happened, you know, what was kind of a thing. So, yeah, I've got a little bit of everything, but it all, you know, has a country flavor to it, everything that I do. So, yeah. And now the other CDs that I've done, I do here at my own small recording studio I'm also a session singer I people send me stuff and I add harmonies mm -hmm. on their songs and then I um, send it back to them because of the internet as you know we can fly they call it flying tracks back and forth yeah so I would just sing harmony and then I would just sing that one send that one track back to them and then they would mix it into um, their you know, the recording. I, I'm a harmony singer for Backwoods Recording Studio in Nashville, and then um, BGM in Texas. And, and that's another studio, and then a, a couple studios here in Colorado. Well, so, yeah, great. like everybody, we all do a little bit of this, a little bit of that. Well, that's wonderful. That's wonderful. Well, you've got a couple great albums, and In This Old House uh, was, was produced by Lloyd Maines, and uh, my listeners, I'm sure, know that name. Uh, he's worked with the Dixie Chicks and Willie Nelson and so many great. Uh, he's, he's a very well-known producer and one of the best out there. Um, what was it like uh, working with him? You know, it was phenomenal, and he's actually the, the lead singer of the Dixie Chicks, Natalie. That is her daddy. Yeah, and, um, yeah. I've never met her. But um, from what I've heard about her and having known him, they're completely different. Uh, he is phenomenal. It was just 
such an honor to work with him. The fact that because he's very particular about who he will produce, and I was so honored. And he's great. It was different because when I recorded in Nashville, the band took the songs and they did them up like they wanted. Then they had me sing it. Well, what Lloyd did is he had me come in and play my guitar. I was the guitar player on the acoustic guitar. Just me by myself. He had me play. And then he had the musicians come in and play on top of what I did. Because what he told me is, he said, this needs to sound like you. So even if you don't have the band, that core, the root of the song is still there. And um, so that's how we did it. It was a different way of recording. But nicest guy, oh my gosh, you know, a lot of times, sometimes, not a lot, sometimes people in the music business, if they're very famous, they might have a big ego or something but this guy he's just a love he's he's just really an amazing person and a musical genius i think absolutely it yeah absolutely. loved it well you also recorded an, al- an album at uh, willie nelson's studio i did that was uh one empty chair and that's that's pretty country sound in there mm-hmm. um that cd um one empty chair is a song i, I wrote about my mom also but that that CD, we went into Willie's studio at the Pert now is out there. Um, we, Willie actually had two, has or he did, I don't know if he still does, had two studios. And the one out on, on the lake is the one I did it. I think it's called Pert now is I can't remember. But um, so I didn't have much of a budget. And so I told the musicians, okay, we're going to practice once, and then we're going to go play this in the studio because I don't have much money. And if you mess up, I'm leaving it on the record. <laughs> so, I did. I, I was just young, and I just didn't know any better. And they were all like, you can't do that, because usually, you know, it takes days and weeks and months to record CDs, and everybody gets it perfect. I said, no, I don't have much money. So so we went in the studio, and each of the songs, first we played it once to go over it, and then we recorded it, and that was it. We recorded that entire CD in six hours. Wow. That's amazing. I know. It, so- I know. it sounds like, great. I, I- I was listening. Yeah, my main. Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Oh, I was going to say I was. There's a couple songs on this album that I really like, and one of them is called "He Kissed Her Picture." I think this is such a great story. Oh, thank you. That's one of my favorites. When I wrote that song, I just cried and cried, and for a long time I couldn't even sing it without crying. But people seem to really relate to that song. But I do want to say on the on the album. So we recorded the entire thing in six hours, including my lead vocal. It was just, I sang it one time. That was it. We went over it once, then I sang it, and I was, boom, that's it. Wow. And then I went back in and added harmony. And I I would never try and do an album in six hours again. <laughs> well, yeah, it but, turned um, out good. It sure turned out good. I'll tell you what, it sounds great. And there's a there's a kind of a spontaneity, I think, as you listen to the album that really uh, it shines through. And, and maybe, the, maybe it, that was a good way to do this album. It really, you know, I think it put a real good edge on it. Yeah, thank you. I think so. And the the piano player was Floyd Domino, who is one of oh yeah Grammys. You know, he used to play with Asleep in the Wheel, and he um, he was on the road with Merle Haggard. Yep. And of course, you know that's I I really would have loved to sing with Merle Haggard. I loved Merle Haggard. Um, but anyhow, he was he was his piano player on the road with him. So I mean, I had stellar musicians, and it, you know they just. So they're they're so good that they didn't really have to overdub anything. Yeah. And I I just scared them, I think. (laughs) (laughs) Not very nice of me, but (laughs) they're great. great. Tell me about the song Kitty Quay. Kitty Quay is actually a town in North Texas. It's up by Turkey, Texas. So Turkey, Texas is the home of Bob Wills. I'm sure all your listeners know who Bob Wills is. Absolutely. And my husband and I went up to Kitty Quay to go horseback riding at Caprock Caverns, although I don't really ride a horse. But, um, I, I, you know, I'm not really a horse person, but I tried. So we walked into a restaurant there in Kitty Quay. And um, to get into the, the dining area, you had to walk um, through the kitchen, just like the song says. I walked through the kitchen, and there was this beautiful black woman standing there flipping burgers and cooking steaks and all that. And I thought, well, this is weird. We're walking through the kitchen, and we sit down, and this pregnant, real pretty pregnant gal uh, comes up. And, you know, usually, like, if they're going to hand you rolls, they bring them in a basket. Well, she had a, 
a pot holder on her hand, and she came out bringing the whole pan of rolls and just stuck them out in front of us so we could rip off however many we wanted. And we're sitting there looking at this, and I told my husband, I said, look, and by the way, his name is Layered, like if you get your hair layered. Yeah. That's who that is. So um, kind of a long story, but so basically, as we were sitting there, I handed him a napkin. I said, write this down. Look, there's three uh, drunk uh, Spanish men behind us, and they're singing that song, and they're stacking up beer cans. So everything, he wrote down just some notes of what I said, and then we walked out of there, um, and when we left, um, he just handed me that napkin, and a couple of days later, I just took those few notes, and I wrote that song. So everything that you hear in the song is exactly a description of you know of the the thing and the thing is there was this pregnant girl and our waitress and i didn't hear her say kitty quay got to get got to find a way to get away from kitty quay but looking at her <laughs> she <laughs> she did not want to be a waitress in you know a little place in kitty quay because she was hugely pregnant and i found out later that she had her baby and then she moved to turkey texas and was doing nails over there oh wow that's, that's great. I know. Crazy <laughs> story about Kitty Quay. So that's where that came from. Now, that's a real country song there. It is. I like it a lot, I, and I want to play that here shortly. It's it's a really good song. Um, your album, First Class, there's a song on there called Blue Tonight that I really like a lot, too. Tell me a little bit about that one. Yeah, you know, I wrote that a long time ago, and, and it's a positive song. It actually, I heard way, way back when, I heard a song that Reva mcintyre did about being blue or how blue can i feel or i can't do you remember the song i'm talking about yep, yep how blue yep is that what it's called that's how that's I heard what it's that called on yep video and i thought well i can write a song about being blue and <laughs> that's where that that's where that came from oh by the way let me tell you kitty quay is um kitty quay that song is the theme song on the chamber of commerce in kitty quay now so if people go to the Kitty Quay website or whatever, they can, they can also hear the song there, and they did a video of it. So that oh, that's was kind cool. of cool. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's great. Well, folks, please visit BethWilliamsMusic.com, and you can uh, get her music also at iTunes and CD Baby. And, of course, you're going to hear her every Friday at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on My Kind of Country with the Beth Williams Indie Americana Radio Show. And, Beth, it's such a pleasure to have you as part of the My Kind of Country family, and I want to thank you for taking time to be on the show tonight. You bet. And I'm so excited to be part of your family. I really am. And I, I look forward to being in touch with your listeners. They can listen to my show. And if they want to make comments, they can you know, email me and let me know if I play a song and they want me to play it again the following week or whatever, just um, to let me know. And, and I'd, I'd love for them to join me on Facebook at Beth Williams Music. That would be okay. cool, too. But I'm very excited. Thank you so much for you know, letting me come into your family. Well, it's a pleasure, Beth, and I really enjoyed talking with you. And we're going to play some of your music. I want to play Kitty Quay and uh, He Kissed Her Picture. I think these are great songs from the uh, One Empty Chair album from Beth Williams, and it's BethWilliamsMusic.com, and all that information will be available on our website as well. Beth Williams, thank you so much for being on My Kind of Country. Thank you, Scott. <laughs> Singing nothing for the poor man in 
Ronnie is 50, or maybe he's five. Depends on who you're talking to. Lives in a home on the outskirts of town, where dreamers believe dreams come true. He strums his guitar so sweetly, and though the strings were not in tune, he was playing for the love of his life, the girl who hung the moon. Then he kissed her picture, said, "My mother." Said someday I'd be with her, soft as angels whisper. He kissed her picture. Ronnie has good friends he's made through the years in that special home on the hill. As children. Mr. Pig.